is that sanction. People need to know if they do do that at a game, you're going to be banned from life from coming to a rugby game. The people in place to make those decisions don't have that emotional connection with racism, with those issues, because they don't understand what it feels like. I want it to be a fair ground for everyone else, not just for the people playing this game now, but for the people at grassroots level who are coming through, that they know that they can come to into a sport that's safe and they're going to be supported and protected. I was promised that at the start of this season in November that there will be protocols in place and they were going to send it out to all the clubs. Nothing was done. Um, I wasn't even notified, I wasn't even messaged. I simply just don't, don't care enough. It doesn't mean enough. If something meant enough to you and you wanted to make a change about something, I think you would, you would make it happen. I've received a, a few lines basically delivering common sense of, you know, if you are racially abused, then you can speak to a match official or um, you, can, you can tell a teammate or you can tell your team manager, which is common sense. I mean, if you, if you were to be abused on the pitch, that's what you'd do. But there is no, I feel like there's, they've had four or five months to, deliver, to deliver these messages, um, which doesn't really change much. All you're saying is report it. What, what is the sanctions for, for, for that happening anyway? Because there's not a sanction in place anyway. It's just saying, if it happens, there will be a sanction. But what is that sanction? People need to know if they do do if they do do that at a game, you're going to be banned from life from coming to a rugby game. That might have someone's second thoughts. It's not just about sanctioning people. It's actually trying to help and encourage people to to view things differently, to educate them. We have all these gambling um, workshops. We've got. Um, the doping workshops, we've got all these different things, but there's nothing on racism and it's been going on for the last year. There should be some sort of planning, there should be some sort of thought behind it that the people in place to make those decisions don't have that emotional connection with, these, with racism, with those issues, because they don't understand what it feels like to be racially abused. This is an overnight problem. And that's why I feel like those little gestures of you know, wearing a shirt, kneeling, all that is small fixes. There are deep rooted issues that need to be fixed and, and not enough is being done to, to help that. There's so many few black players in the league that it, they don't need to necessarily fix that problem because there's, it's not a, a widespread problem within the sport because it's not going to affect 90, 95% of the people within the sport. So why are we going to invest so much time and effort into trying to fix a problem of a very few when it's not really a problem for the vast majority of the other people in the sport. So I've had my issues in the past from moving to separate clubs and, you know, my worst crime at the time was with me, me being late and I held my hand up. But the way I was portrayed in the media is someone with serious attitude problems who, who's, uh, who doesn't care, who, who's not bothered about playing about sport, who doesn't care about the rugby. And, and that was all how I was portrayed for the media as someone who just really, really didn't care. And that, that hurt me a lot and I've worked hard over the last two, three years to change that perception. And I see other situations of where players have left clubs for different reasons and they don't get that same sort of portrayal into the media as those people. And even recently in the game um, against Gloucester, we, there was a bit of a scuffle and then I went in and someone uh, and the commentator at the time mentioned that I potentially have headbutted someone and I was trending on Twitter on that, uh, on that evening as a thug, someone who shouldn't be in the game, who should be banned, all this sort of stuff. And people completely forget that I actually, I've never been banned, I've never been cited for any dirty play. I don't, I'm not growing up as a thug, I come from a very good home. Players are a bit anxious about wanting to step out, out on their own because you're just going to be left out in the dark because if you do step out on their own, so what, what support is in place because if, if they can't support getting those protocols in place, that education, that what we're trying to change, if, if they're not going to support that, then what hope do we have? Listen to Maro, you know, you've got Ben Urbano, Anthony, Watson, all those guys feel the frustration. What we want to feel and what I get from, from listening to them and listening to, to their side of things is they just want to feel that equality. They want to feel fairness. They want to feel that they're supported in, in wanting change. No one wants to be standing out alone and, and feeling like if they overstep the mark because I almost feel like in rugby, we have to be perceived in a certain way. Where I get my drive from and passion with it is, like I said, I'm a dad now, um, for one. 
Two, I support, I see so many people wanting change, having enough of it, wanting to make a difference to the sport in the right way. This isn't us, me, sitting here complaining about the RFU, complaining about, let's complain about the RFPA or anyone else. This is me simply sitting here saying, I just want more to be done. I want, I want, I want it to be a fair ground for everyone else, not just for the people playing this game now, but for the people at grassroots level who are coming through. I want it to be a fair ground for them when they enter the sport that they know that they can come to, into a sport that's safe and they're going to be supported and protected.